We've been exploring the idea of big data for some time. There's a lot to know and a lot to absorb. But like any technology, it's evolving rapidly. And as we plan today's deployments, it's also important to look into the future of big data. And what better person to talk about that future than Sarah Diamond? Sarah heads the OCAD University program, which under her leadership has moved forward to be a leader in the fusion of design thinking and the digital transformation that we're seeing all around us. Sarah told us how important big data is as a part of that digital transformation. Big data is incredibly important for businesses and you know one of the um, great I would say burgeoning areas of analytics is in understanding social media patterns and behaviors and um, what consumers um, think about different kinds of brands, what their actual consumption patterns are, what they buy. You can slice and dice that data in terms of looking at demographics and you can get a fairly accurate picture of what people do. Now, you may not get um, an accurate picture of what they feel about what they do and there is an interesting discussion now about um, the relationship between big data and what's described as thick data. And thick data comes more from a sort of ethnographic um, perspective, uh, behavioral psychology, and it's the sense that you have to put the human analytics uh, into the analysis of big data for business to really be able to use it effectively in developing products and um, being able to address their consumer base. So it's that combination now of uh, psychology and um, understanding why people do what they do that we now have to apply to that amazing aggregation of, of data sets. And that's, I think, where the real effective tool space is for a lot of businesses, at least those that are consumer facing. Sarah talked to us about how big data is moving from quantitative analysis to qualitative and more predictive analysis that Sarah referred to as thick data, which captures new areas such as sentiment analysis. Sentiment analytics, which is a field I'm also very interested in, um, tries to extract that using um, language and analyzing language. But even with that, you still need to go back and try and understand uh, the aberrations in human behavior and why we make decisions that are counterintuitive and don't necessarily have to do with um, what we appear to um, think we want to do. These new approaches will require new tools and new ways of using existing tools, focusing on things like visual analytics. So we tend to make tools that are very generic, and the research is beginning to show that we need to know how to really personalize those tools for um, your context in which you're working so that you can make the analysis in the most effective way that works for you, both in terms of your perceptual space, because some of this is very much about cognitive science, and also in terms of your cultural space. What's meaning, meaningful for you? Does color work, or does something else work, or do you need a metaphor? So some of what we need to do with these tools is personalization. Um, some of it has to do with continuing to really build um, the uh, analytics and the um, algorithms that are going to be more accurate and more precise. And we've made real headway there. Um, but part of it also is computational speed. And a big piece of tool development right now is real time. So um, we can look retrospectively at large data sets and understand um, patterns from them. But there is analysis that needs to happen uh, in real time. And that requires being able to stream large data sets and do effective analytics with that data. And that's still an emerging field. These new approaches will allow us to really dive into and mine unstructured data, like we find in social media. So um, if you're going to um, provide a tool that looked at traffic patterns, let's say in an area, what you would want to be able to do is add the consumer's ability to make a comment there, to add social media to a pain point, uh, to uh, upload a video that they've taken that shows uh, an issue or problem that they're having. And so it's that, I that idea of human engagement in actually building the data set, but also providing commentary from a first person perspective into big data analytics. One thing is for certain, big data will continue to be one of the major forces driving us to a new digital future. The future that we've talked about with Sarah Diamond. Qualitative, predictive analysis of unstructured data is emerging right now as we speak. So what's next? We asked Sarah to look into the not too distant future and tell us what she sees. Well, we're going to need to use big data analytics because we're moving into the world of the Internet of Things where we have a connected universe of technologies that speak to 
one another and where humans are another layer on top of that. So uh, we're going to be very reliant on effective big data analytics. And I think in that world, um, we want to be able to make decisions based on the best possible scenarios that can be given to us. We want to have a world where we have um, very personalized um, data profiles that allow us to navigate out into our larger universe, whether it's our home and what happens in that home, whether it's planning our education and learning, and definitely with our healthcare, it's being able to have that kind of self-management of our healthcare environment because we have access to data about our care, our health, and access to those who care for us and with us. So at every point in our lives, I imagine a seamless access to that large world of data, but where it's highly personalized. And we also can make decisions about who also has access to that data. Check out this page for additional resources that you can use to explore this topic. And keep visiting this site as we'll add real-life case studies and additional information.